Your Excellencies. <laughs> Hello, MGTOW. Hello, men. This is Howard Dare. Thanks for stopping by. So, I want to talk about the power of love. The chemistry of love. Because I think you're going to find that it might not be quite as magical as you had thought. But first, I want to say thank you to everybody who's been stopping by, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, even donating. I really appreciate it. Now, the power of love. Because here's the thing, guys. What are what are you upset about? You know? What's the problem? Why care at all? Because men do care, don't they? They care strongly about the situation. They feel they've been treated unfairly. They are angry. They're upset, especially at the early stages of red pill rage. Am I right? Of course I'm right about this. They were expecting something, you know, they were expecting love. And there's a reason why we are addicted to love. This is the strongest chemical reaction that there is. This is one of the strongest hormonal and chemical reactions that there is for man. And if you're not aware of what's going on inside of you and you've got no control over it, holy smokes, it can really, you know, it's like the best drug addiction that there could possibly be, or the worst. So I'm going to read a little bit from an article here, which covers some of the things that I want to talk about, just to you know cover some of the basics, and then I want to talk about it. And I'm going to be doing additional videos on this, you know, the science of love, how to break the addiction, and then how to supply your own motivators and triggers for these super strong and powerful uh, states of mind, because they really are, you know, how the human being reaches the upper levels of human potential. So let me just go through, you know, this article a little bit. When do you know if you fancy somebody? What does love do to your brain chemicals? And is falling in love just nature's way to keep our species alive? We call it love. It feels like love. But the most exhilarating of all human emotions is probably nature's beautiful way of keeping the human species alive and reproducing. With an irresistible cocktail of chemicals, our brain entices us to fall in love. We believe we're choosing a partner, but we may merely be the happy victim of nature's lovely plan. It's not what you say. Psychologists have shown it takes between 90 seconds and four minutes to decide if you fancy someone. Research has shown this has little to do with what is said. Rather, 55% is through body language, 38% is tone and speed of the voice, and only 7% is through what they say. The three stages of love. Helen Fisher of Rutgers University in the States has proposed three stages of love, lust, attraction, and attachment. Each stage might be given a different hormone and chemicals. Stage one, lust. This is the first stage of love and is driven by the sex hormones testosterone and estrogen in both men and women. Stage two, attraction. This is the amazing time when you're truly love struck and can think of little else. Scientists think that the three neurotransmitters are involved in this stage, adrenaline, dopamine, and serotonin. Adrenaline. The initial stages of falling for somebody activates your stress response, increasing your blood levels of adrenaline and cortisol. This has the charming effect that when you unexpectedly bump into your new love, you start to sweat, your heart races, and your mouth goes dry. Dopamine. Helen Fisher asked newly love-struck couples to have their brains examined and discovered why they have high levels of the neurotransmitter dopamine. This chemical stimulates desire and reward by triggering an intense rush of pleasure. It has the same effect on the brain as taking cocaine. Fisher suggests couples show the signs of surging dopamine, increased energy, less need for sleep or food, focused attention, and exquisite delight in the smallest detail of this novel relationship serotonin. And finally, serotonin, one of love's most important chemicals that may explain why when you're falling in love, your new love keeps popping into your thoughts. Does love change the way you think? A landmark, a landmark experiment in Pisa, Italy showed that early love, the attraction phase, really changes the way you think. Dr. Donatella Martizzi, a psychiatrist at the University of Pisa, advertised for 20 couples who had been madly in love for less than six months. She wanted to see if the brain's mechanisms that cause you to constantly think about your new love were related to the brain mechanisms of obsessive-compulsive disorder. 
By analyzing blood samples from the lovers, Dr. Martinez discovered that serotonin levels of new lovers were equivalent to the low serotonin levels of obsessive compulsive disorder patients. Love needs to be blind. Newly smitten lovers often idealize their partner, magnifying their virtues and explaining away their flaws, a leading researcher on the psychology of love has suggested. New couples also exalt the relationship itself. It's very common to think that they have a relationship that's closer and more special than any anyone else's. Psychologists think we need this rose-tinted view. It makes us want to stay together to enter the next stage of love, attachment. Stage three, attachment. Attachment is the bond that keeps couples together long enough for them to have and raise children. Scientists think that there might be two major hormones involved in this feeling of attachment, oxytocin and vasopressin. Oxytocin, the cuddle hormone. Oxytocin is a powerful hormone released by men and women during orgasm. It probably deepens the feelings of attachment and makes Makes couples feel closer to one another after they have had sex. The theory goes that the more sex a couple has, the deeper their bond becomes. It probably deepens the feelings of attachment and makes couples feel much closer to one another after they have sex. Oxytocin also seems to help cement the strong bond between mother and child and is released during childbirth. It is also responsible for the mother's breasts automatically releasing milk at the mere sight or sound of her young baby. Diana Witt, assistant professor of psychology from New York, has shown that if you block the natural release of oxytocin in sheep and rats, they reject their own young. Conversely, injecting oxytocin into rats who've never had sex causes them to fawn over another's female young, nuzzling the pups and protecting them as if they were their own. Vasopressin. Vasopressin is another important hormone in the long-term commitment stage and is released after sex. Vasopressin, also called antidiuretic hormone, works with your kidneys to control thirst. Its potential role in long-term relationships was discovered when scientists looked at the prairie vole. Prairie voles indulge in far more sex than is strictly necessary for the purpose of reproduction. That's because they're so romantic. I just added that. The romantic prairie voles. They also, like humans, form fairly stable pair bonds. When male prairie voles were given a drug that suppresses their effect of vasopressin, the bond with their partners deteriorated immediately as they lost their devotion and failed to protect their partner from new suitors. And finally, how to fall in love. Find a complete stranger. Reveal to each other intimate details about your life for half an hour. Then, stare deeply into each other's eyes without talking for about four minutes. York psychologist Professor Arthur Aron has been studying why people fall in love. He asked his subject to carry out the above three steps and found that many of his couples felt deeply attracted after the 34-minute experiment. Two of his subjects later got married. Okay, so that's the article. Now, here's the thing that I want to talk about. Obviously, this hormonal chemical reaction is enticing human beings to bond and, you know, have sex and <laughs> raise children to the ones that they're the most attracted to. And these feelings and these hormones were trained through, you know, this pleasure principle. We seek out pleasure and our dopamine centers get activated. Uh, we form close bonds with, you know, the people that we love and the oxytocin is stimulated. And this causes a kind of, well, a hormonal reaction, but it's a drug. It's something that we become addicted to. And what happens if the person that you're developing all these feelings with turns on you. Because here's the thing. Look at how oxytocin works on the female at first, okay? Um, if you can create certain cues, you will stimulate her to fall in love with you, whether or not, you know, it's legitimate or not. Assuming that she wants to, right? You know, she's, she's like a prairie vole. Um, but notice what happens when she turns mean, when she turns ugly, when she comes after the person, right? I, I wonder what would happen if uh, a woman got divorced from a man and turned on him, you know, violently, just told all the dirty lies that she could to deny him access to his children and run him through the ring as best she could because, you know, she's upset, she's angry, and the states and the courts were going along with it. And I wonder if at this point, if you gave her a large dose of oxytocin, you know, what would happen, right? Would she suddenly look at that man that she's been hating now, that she loved once and was bonded to, you know, and wanted to cuddle with, enough to have a child with, right? Now she's turned on him and feels violent and hates him, right? And now what would happen if 
when she comes into contact with him, you pump her full of oxytocin. Would she fall? Would she fall in love with the guy? Would she want to cuddle with the guy? Because notice how strong. What I'm suggesting is is that just as her love and affection is a hormonal concoction going through her system, so is the hatred. So is the resentment. It, you know, in, in other words, there's no, or to put it another way, there's no amount of oxytocin that would make her stop hating a man once she's decided to hate the man. So it's not this pure fall in love, cuddle sort of hormone at all. But the more important and interesting aspect of the, about this, you know, we don't have to understand all the interactions of, you know, the details of these things to get a basic view and understanding of the process that we as men are going through. Because as I said, you have all these good feelings, you have all these um, associations with one particular woman, right? And these are the most powerful hormonal stimulus that the human being can experience. And it's associated with this one woman and, you know, she's got blonde hair and she's got big boobs, right? Um, and she's got blue eyes. And it happens at a young age for the male. But then she breaks up with him or it just goes wrong. And the man is heartbroken, right? But you see, he's not just heartbroken. He is sick. He is love sick. He needs those chemicals back and he's not getting them. And those chemicals are stronger than cocaine. They're the most powerful, you know, some of the most powerful chemicals that we have. So of course he's love sick. And now he runs into a woman who's, you know, got blonde hair, big boobs, blue eyes, just like his other girl. So he's chasing after that high again, like a drug addict. And he's trying to, you know, kind of revive that whole system. And maybe he's brave enough to, you know, have a new uh, awakening of these hormones from a slightly different new source. Or maybe he's trying to, you know, get it back like it was before. But you see, it's an addiction, right? It's a, And it's an addiction to those hormones. Okay. And the particular details of it, they don't really matter, right? It's like the exact chemical nature breakdown of which hormones at what time doesn't matter. Which particular girl one particular guy falls for doesn't matter. Because here's the thing, you know, let's say that you're the baby in the crib and, you know, you're neglected by your mother and you're crying because you're starving, right? And this is the only time that the mother then comes over to feed you, okay? So, and she's got blonde hair and blue eyes, okay? And big boobs. So your mother comes over, she's screaming at you, she's scowling at you, she hates you, but she hands you the bottle, <laughs> right? She hands the bottle to the baby. The baby's crying, baby gets the bottle, the baby is finally soothed. The mother growls at the baby and then walks away again. And she's not going to see that baby again until it's screaming and crying so loud that she actually, you know, has to get up and do something for it, right? Maybe she's got like some oxytocin, you know, uh, suppression going on or something, right? Exactly. So now what happens to that little baby? What does he associate with? What does he start associating that bottle with? and the presence of his mother. His mother's being mean to him, but it's the only affection, it's the only interaction he gets. And right after she's mean to him, okay, she gives him the bottle, which he, he loves it. And this goes on every day, <laughs> right? For, you know, well, in some cases, you know, 25 years, but, uh, <laughs> right, in most cases, I guess just a few years. But what, you know, look at what it's done. Look at the formation now that's in the young man's mind, okay? So now let's skip forward to his his first love and you know it's a pretty girl blonde hair blue eyes right yeah figure that um and she's nice to him you know what i mean she likes him and she's nice to him and he he, he can't even really respond to it you know he needs somebody to be mean to him and neglectful like his mother was because that's what you know he associated the bottle with or maybe he does fall in love with her. Maybe he does have these feelings and form a bond with her. You know, just a normal, healthy bond. You can see, and if it's a good relationship, and then the relationship ends, you can see how, how desperate and how upset, you know, the man would be trying to recreate that hormonal situation. Okay, I think you understand, you know, the basics of what I'm talking about here. Like I said, don't have to go into the chemical breakdown of, you know, everything that's going on. You understand that an addiction is being formed and that it can even be um, negatively reinforced, right? Like the women can be being unkind and mean to the man and he can still bond to that, right? Okay, so now the way that men chase love and chase after women does it make a little bit more sense, right? Because they're chasing that hormonal rush inside of themselves. They're not chasing after women. The women are the trigger for those hormonal events taking place. Okay, I think that, you know, that's understandable. 
Now, here's the thing. If you can understand that, you can mitigate it, can't you? You can see that, oh shit, I'm only going to be attracted to, you know, I'm mainly attracted to women that have blonde hair, blue eyes, big boobs, and treat me like shit. And I know why now, too. See what I'm saying? So now, couldn't a man, even though, he, you know, young age, he was, you know, went through all this conditioning and things like that. But at an older age, couldn't he train himself to look at the woman with the blonde hair, or the blue eyes and say to himself, OK, that's a dangerous woman. And couldn't he train himself to then look at a woman with um, dark hair and dark eyes and say, you know, I'm going to be attracted to these types of women. And then if on a daily basis, on a regular basis, he had pleasant, good interactions with a dark haired woman and he kept reminding himself that, oh, you know, those blonde haired women are bad news. What would happen? Wouldn't he then develop and associate the dark haired women with the hormonal um, feelings, you know, that he's triggering within himself? I think he would. I think it's worth experimenting with and looking into. Now, this is leading me up towards another video. Okay, where I'm going to be suggesting the idea that you can control your hormones to a large degree. If you understand the processes that are going on, you can control them largely. And as a, as a human, you know, as a man, what else are you going to do? Are you going to be a victim to all this stuff? You know what I mean? It's like if, if you're watching a horror movie and it's really upsetting you and bothering you, you, you turn it off, don't you? Okay. So if you're stuck in some sort of hormonal loop where you're attracted to women that are unkind to you, that are unattainable to you, you can switch that around. And I also want to start talking about just straight up testosterone and, you know, sex drive for the man because it really does mitigate a lot of this bullshit, right? <laughs> That's for a different video. And another thing, the adrenaline junkie, the extreme sports person, because I've got a little bit of that in me. You know, I, I love the high speed biking and everything like that, uh, mountain biking. And yeah, I like that a whole lot because it puts us into the zone. And I'll tell you something, it has to be hard and difficult. There's, there's a science, the science of flow, of getting into the zone of somebody like Michael Jordan, where they're just going and they're operating at, you know, superhuman level and they're exhibiting super endurance. And it is the awakening of the Superman. And it is this rush of hormones that we get when we're in those extreme situations and we are just reacting to the whole, you know, situation. And it's very liberating and very freeing. And people pursue this feeling, this adrenaline rush to their own death often. You know, that's why we call them adrenaline junkies, because that's what they're looking for. They're looking for that moment, you know, of when they're jumping out of the plane and they're not sure if the parachute opens and they're falling at high speed and it opens and then they've got to navigate to the ground. There's no thinking and they're looking for that moment because it creates this con this cocktail of hormones for them that is as powerful, if not more powerful than this whole idea of love. Now, once you understand this, you can pursue it. You can train yourself with it. You can even supplement it with the actual chemicals. You can actually change your body's chemistry to stimulate, stim you know, to stimulate or to deaden the effects of negative hormones. So I'm going to be going into that a little bit later on in the week. Meantime, let me know what you think about this, the idea that, you know, we're addicted to love and that we can change that addiction. We can break that addiction. Let me know what you think about it in the comments section below. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, donate, request a Howard Dare video this holiday season, or just make a donation to the channel. I would appreciate it. And join me again, Howard Dare, as I plan to have more content for you. Thank you, MGTOW.